for more on this and everything going on in the world of the PFL and Bellator, let us say hello to Don Davis, who's kind enough to join us. There he is. Hello, Don. Great to see you. Always look forward to these chats. How are you? Wow, is that a lot of news on the lead-in? Yes. That's an incredible amount of news on the lead-in. Off the top of my dome, too. I wasn't reading anything. That's that's crazy. And, and here I am only to promote uh, the, the Roadhouse remake with <laughs> Conor McGregor. That's uh, all I'm here to do. I yes. appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, well, an exciting time for you guys and a lot to discuss. Could I just ask, uh, I'd be remiss if I don't, some big news regarding the UFC uh, earlier today in the class action lawsuit. Do you have any thoughts on the news that has come out about two hours ago? My main thought is what I've been consistent saying. If you're a top fighter or you're an emerging star, it's the best time in the market for you. You used to have one option really at the premium level. And with the PFL, you have two. And the difference between two and one is much more than one. <laughs> for all of you who've ever had a job offer, having two job offers versus one job offer is all the difference in the world. So to me, the biggest difference is not the antitrust lawsuit. The biggest difference is the emergence of PFL to be a premium option on a global scale with the same distribution, the same ability to pay, the same great option for you. That's made the most difference for fighters, I believe. But obviously, it's a good, good outcome for fighters today. But I believe PFL being on level for fighters as UFC has made the most difference in the last three or four years. Okay. Um, we're moving towards uh, the Friday card in Belfast and uh, the platforms that you signed with, et cetera. But I'm just curious, since the last time we spoke, was there ever a consideration rolling Bellator into PFL and not moving forward with this Bellator as a separate entity idea? Look, it's a great question. And obviously we considered everything. As, as I told you when I sat down in studio, our entire philosophy is fighter first, fan focused. We don't want to necessarily always be right. We just want to win with those two kind of North stars driving us. So we looked at all the options. We had picked up 200 great fighters that we didn't have before. So we said, what's the best deployment, the best use, and the best product when we have 200 fighters we didn't have before? And we considered all options. What we decided on was two things that we've announced. One, half of those fighters moved into the PFL league season, which remains on ESPN flagship primetime Friday night. So the toughest test in MMA just got a lot tougher. The average ranking and all the inside MMA fans that watch your show, no fight matrix ranking. The average ranking, if you took the entire 72 fighters, right? 12 fighters, six weight classes in the league season last year was 60. That was the total ranking in the league season in 2023. This year, it's 35. 72 fighters. The average ranking is 35. So the toughest test in MMA just got tougher because half of those Bellator fighters came in to the PFL League season. Many fighters, that's not the best fit for them. And it's not the best fit for fans. Johnny Elbin, Patchy Mix, Usman, Pitbull. They make too much money, and they don't want to fight four times a year. That's why you created the Bellator champion season with two title fights, eight events. So half of the Bellator fighters went to the Bellator one-off event product, which we called the Bellator Champions Series. So that's really the two products and how we divided those top fighters and how fans can enjoy them really in two very distinct ways. The PFL product, as you know, is on ESPN. We announced the Bellator product on Max, both broad distribution. Almost all the Bellator events are outside the United States. Almost all the PFL events are hosted inside the United States. So clear distinction, but both very premium. Uh, the, the Max announcement yesterday uh, was, was a fascinating one on multiple fronts, uh, because just as a you know, a combat sports, I don't know if you want to call myself a historian or anything like that. The idea of going from Showtime to HBO is pretty darn cool. And you might be the last combat sports entity to hold that distinction. But we, we know that they're out of the combat sports business. I know WBD has a deal with AEW and I know they, they had one for a moment. 
Um, how did this come about? How did it come together? And why did you feel like Max was the best home for the Bellator events here in the United States? Yeah, really three reasons. Number one, when you look at the Max platform, 98 million homes globally, the vast majority of those in the United States. So when you stack up the biggest streaming platforms, boy, after Netflix, that's it. So we said, how can we get the new Bellator Champion Series to the most people? Check. Number two, what properties do they have? NBA, NHL, AEW. So we just put down a house in the neighborhood with the biggest mansions. So on ESPN, we're the home of all great sports, but there's a lot of sports on ESPN. We went out and we said, which property has the best, most premium, most tentpole sports events where we can put down a home and really be recognized to build Bellator? And that was Max. Check. Number two. And number three, where could we do a deal at the highest levels? We didn't do a deal with the sports division. We did a deal with the highest levels of this company. So together, we can build this property. Check number three. We could not be more excited at the WBD relationship. We think the best is just starting. And we think over time, you'll also see them showcase linear on call it the um, TNT sports block on True TV that they're building with select NBA, select NHL games. You'll see select Bellator Champion Series fights also on call it TNT sports on True this year also. Okay, so the live events, not just uh, old. You'll see live events also. Okay. Select events. Now, obviously, because most of them are international, they'll be picking and choosing which ones make the most sense to move to linear because this is best of all a streaming product. So you'll see not just some packaged, but also some live. Okay, very nice. And how many years is the deal? Uh, we do not disclose anything about the years or the economics of this deal. No, I know uh, that. That's, like why, that's why I'm asking you the question. I know that. That's I why. know. <laughs> and you know, I, I tell you anything that I can tell you. Right, right. Okay. Fair. Is oh, it's it, first in line for information that's mine to share. Is it uh, multi-year? Can't share with you anything. Okay, fair enough. It, and, and just curious, is it, it is a, a, not like a time buy or anything of that nature? You are No, okay. not at all. Okay, so this is a, a good deal. You're happy with it? Delighted. Okay, Fight Network in Canada. Why them? The Fight Network in Canada, we talked with Rogers, and there was too much conflict. Okay. Too much conflict of time. So obviously, Rogers would have been fantastic. But other than them, UFC was on Fight Network for six years, seven yeah. years. So they yeah. have some combat history, some combat audience. So we thought, other than Rogers, this was our best choice. And once Rogers had some conflict, this was a natural idea. And those are live as well, right? Because that's sometimes been an yes. issue in Canada. Okay, fully live. Correct. Okay. That would have been the issues with Rogers, just too much conflict in the live product. Okay, and DAZN in Europe? DAZN in Europe, Stan Sports in Australia, New Zealand, Globo and Direct TV in Latin America, Super Sport, Canal Plus, call it in Sub-Sahara Africa, uh, I believe RTL in Europe, New Yak, New, um, Unex in Japan, Aqua in Russia. So we're covering 152 countries, all premium, all live. Bellator has never had this distribution in its last decade. Amazing. Uh, well done to you and the team. Uh, you had the super fight card in Riyadh, and some people were celebrating like, hey, look, PFL got whooped. Now, you know, yes, that's sort of a simplistic way of looking at it. Ultimately, it's all PFL, right? It's, it's You own all these guys, and uh, these are all your fighters. So it's not like you went up against another organization and had to, like, scurry off with your tail between your legs. What was your takeaway from what I think was a 5-1 to one victory for Beltar on the main card? How did you feel when you saw that? Great. Us is them. Us is them. The only people I'm worried about are the fans. Do we put on great product for the fans? Unlike other organizations, I'm not here to protect anyone. I'm here to put on the best, best, best fight product for fans. And that it was. So that's point number one. That is our only thing we think about all day long. Point number two is there were some fighters that we wish would have been available. We had some fighters with injury. We had some fighters retire. So PFL was not able to put up its best. I would have liked to seen two of those fights actually have the best against the best. Just as a fan, I would have liked to seen that. And the final point, boy, the fight that really mattered, really delivered. Mm. We all want to see Francis tested 
and to see Francis come back into MMA. And if you ask me sitting cage side with Mike Tyson, with John Jones, with Francis Nagano, as we all were, is there a fight that I really cared about somebody distinguishing themselves was the heavyweight fight? I less cared who won, and I wanted somebody to absolutely dominate in a way that captured the ability to go toe-to-toe with Francis Nagano. And that happened with La Problemo. It was frightening in terms of the domination and what he did in that heavyweight fight. So to me, unbelievable uh, home run for us in terms of our first pay-per-view product. People saw PFL can put on something that's of the scale that we can expect. The fights were great. And we got a heavyweight who can challenge Francis. We couldn't have felt better. Were you disappointed that you didn't get the face off in the cage? No, it was interesting. I, I watched your show, as I always do, and I saw Francis say that somehow in all the excitement, the shuffle, we forgot to ask him to come <laughs> up. And uh, and I just think there was a lot going on and a lot of excitement, a lot of moving pieces, and uh, it just didn't happen. Um, so obviously, Francis was very nice to even come to the event. The event ended at three in the morning, local time. Mm-hmm. He was very close in terms of his training. So I just appreciated him being there, and it all got lost in the shuffle. But uh, none of that means anything, because we're going to have plenty of months to promote that fight. Um, I I said after the Francis-AJ fight that the big winner that night, and I don't say this in sort of like a malicious way, but I I think you'll understand what I'm saying. I I thought the big winner that night was the PFL, because had he won that fight, it might delay his debut with you guys, I think the result expedites his debut. Do you understand where I'm coming from? And do you agree with that? 100%. 100%. People asked me before the fight, when I was um, interviewed, you know, who do I think will win? Who would I want to win? And I obviously root for Francis all the time. He's our partner, and I truly do. But he would not have fought in MMA until the first quarter of 2025. We talked to him about that, and I was very vocal about that that he would have absolutely fought, but it would have been December at the earliest, more likely February of 2025. So he was locked in, but he would have then gone ahead and fight Fury, as we all said, had he won this fight. So it would have delayed. Um, So I'm rooting for Francis all the time, but now he's coming back early. Will it be as early as July? Maybe. Will it be as late as September? No later. But you'll see Francis now in 2024 in PFL, against La Problemo, and what I believe is going to be the, the fight I'm looking forward to the most in the heavyweight division of all of MMA. Will that be a pay-per-view fight? That will be a pay-per-view fight. Um, that fight will also have Chris Cyborg against Larissa Pachenko oh, okay. as the co-main fight. Uh, that fight will also have Cedric Dumbe against somebody we'll announce. So that fight is going to be big just because of Francis but that fight will have other very compelling matchups on it. Where will that fight card take place? That fight card will take place in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Um, But the details in terms of the full card, the details in terms of the month and the timing, we won't announce that for about two more months. Okay, but the the range you're saying around September is, is the cutoff, like the absolute latest? That's what we think, correct. Okay, and uh, I thought, you know, so, so you took me in a different uh, direction here, but uh, just to follow up, uh, Dumbe just had the uh, unceremonious loss to Baki. I thought maybe you'd try to run that back in France with him. Why aren't you going to do that? Well, I would call it an unceremonious tie. Okay, fair enough. Well, yes. I guess that's... But yeah. I know what you're saying. Um, one, we may run that back. Two, uh, Cedric will fight again before Oh, that okay. pay-per-view. Got it. So you will see Cedric. And Paris, we'll see Cedric again before then. Um, so prepare for announcements in the next two to three weeks on Cedric. If you're a France MMA fan, we will not disappoint. You will see him again in Paris this year. Would that be on the May card? It may be on the May card. And okay. it may be in the Accor Arena. Okay. And it may be with our friend Patchy Mix um, as a co-main headliner. Okay. Uh, so would and would Baki be his uh, opponent, the man he fought? It may be. Okay. It may be. It may be somebody else. Um, so we're working with Cedric on what he thinks would be super interesting and super compelling. But um, we don't want to deny French fans seeing a full Cedric fight. 
We believe they're do that, and we're going to make sure that happens. So that would be interesting because that would mean he would then go on a Bellator card, right? So we we were we are now seeing like some cross pollination. We are seeing once again all fighters are PFL fighters. Yeah, um, us is them, and the only things that you won't ever see is if you're in the PFL league season. Toughest test. You've got to go four times in eight months. So you're locked in for the full season. And all those fighters, once once we announce them and they're in, they're in for that year. Now, they might move to another franchise in 2025, but you're in the PFL League season, you're locked. All other fighters, are you going to fight on a pay-per-view fight or are you going to fight on the Bellator Champion Series? You're available because those are one-off events. Mm. And so you're available to move depending on the event, depending on your health, depending on the timing. Uh, he's talked about wanting to fight where PSG plays in Paris, the, the big football stadium, soccer stadium. Is that doable in your opinion? It is doable. Um, Pete Murray, you know, my partner, PFL CEO, has had those discussions at the highest level of PSG and PSG owners. And so I would not rule that out in the future. I don't think that will come together this year. Mm. Um, but I do think that's a possibility for call it a 50,000 seat big event in 2025 was blown away by the uh the crowd that night again luminaries the attendance all that you're watching that and you see it end the way in which it did what do you what are you feeling what are you thinking um it's interesting i'm a little bummed out because when i attend the events it's really the only 12 days a year i don't have to work Hmm. um my team is so good they're doing all the work so i'm entertaining partners um, I'm thanking our team for doing the great work they're doing, but the other 350 days a year, I'm working, right? This is the one day I get to enjoy. And so I'm really a fan. I'm in the moment and, uh, it's one, one, mm. right? Cedric loses pretty bad. And I mean, four takedowns in two minutes almost, and he battles back, but the cards are one, one. So I want to know what's going to happen. And then pretty soon, huh, what's going on? So I, you know, you leave with a little bit of low. And for those who are there, there's 16,200 people. It feels like 35,000 people, Mm. right? I hadn't heard noise and fever and passion like that myself from 16,000 people. And I've been to a Stanley Cup game seven with 16,000 people. It's kind of like that level. Um, So I'm a little down. So I would like to see him come back in that same venue and that Sam fan best with a big fight. I would love to see it again. Uh, you mentioned Chris Cyborg. How's the relationship with her? Because on social media, there does seem to be some, some. Uh, I don't know. I, I was actually, shockingly, I've been covering Chris Cyborg since 2008, and I've always had a great relationship with her. Uh, now, unfortunately, I have to reveal that I've been blocked on social media by Chris Cyborg. I think it's because oh. I said that she's not running her Twitter account and someone else's, and I think the person running it didn't like that I was revealing that. I don't know why it's a surprise. In any event... Uh, I did see a lot of belly aching. Uh, how do you how do you feel about the relationship with Chris? I I think it's totally fine. I I don't get too wrapped up into um, emotions. Um, fighters are very driven to be their best. Um, I'm very driven to be my best. As I always say, I'm a fighter too. I'm just fighting to build the PFL company into a co leader in MMA. So I'm intense. Um, I get down. I get up. Um, the world beats me up. All the same things that happen to them. Um, I try not to post them. I try not to to, to air it out. Um, but I'm 62 years old. I've been through building dozens of companies. So occasionally I can stop myself from doing that stuff. So I know what they all go through. So I don't take any of that personally. Our company you know, tries to respect and roll with the punches and, and take all that. So to me, no big deal. All of our fighters, um, we want to build them up as great as they can be, have them make as much money as they can, give them every opportunity they can. And um, and, and to, to me, no big deal at all. So her next fight will be on that card, nothing in between? Nothing in between. Chris is certainly on the Mount Rushmore. Some people would say the greatest of all time. She's a pay-per-view fighter. We've told her that. Um, so when her account, whether it's her or somebody else running it, says, fight me, why am I not fighting? She's earned, earned the respect of only having big fights. So I don't understand why Bellator was fighting her in little fights. 
she's earned the respect of big fights. So we're only going to give her big fights, important fights with big promotion on big stages because that's what she's earned. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, all right. So, so we have that. You mentioned uh, hopefully Francis is on that card and whatnot. Is there any chance Francis does anything before this date or or have you been told by Francis and his team, his next time competing is this plan that you just proposed? That's the current plan, Ariel. That is the current plan. Are you hopeful? You're, 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 you feel good about that? I'm confident. I'm confident. Now, the other thing he's working on is PFL Africa with us. So I believe his mind is actively engaged. Um, uh, He will announce as the chairman, the real chairman of PFL Africa, not just the named chairman, uh, major announcements in within two months of investors, of partners, and of media distribution for PFL Africa to launch in April of 2025. So Pete Murray and Francis Nagano have been hard at work on PFL Africa. So I think he'll use the next month or two to engage his mind also on his other pursuit with PFL of PFL Africa. Uh, could you tell us, from your perspective, what happened with Kayla Harrison? Uh, the last time we spoke, you said one fight left. She said on the show recently, yeah. like, everything's been worked out. Obviously, she's with the UFC now. What what transpired there? You know, May, I and, and everybody who has heard me on your show, but people know me more, know I'm very, not just transparent, honest. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And I talked to Kayla, um, and I believe Kayla and I have a very good relationship, and I don't know. Um, So I can only speculate, and I don't really like to speculate about things that are about other people. Um, So one, I don't know. And two, I'm disappointed. So I think unlike Dana, when he talks about other fighters, um, tends to be negative if they leave tends to be negative that they don't do what UFC wants them to do. Here, I'm disappointed. Uh, PFL in six years has never lost a fighter. And remember, in year one, and year two, and year three, PFL was not a strong company. We we're a new company. So there were many reasons for fighters to leave, and they never did. Now, did we release up fighters? Yes. Did we upgrade fighters? Yes, because we were always getting better. Never had a fighter leave. So this is the first time in six years. And ironically, PFL had never been stronger. And the matchups we had for Kayla Harrison were better than the matchups she was going to get at UFC. She was going to fight Chris Cyborg, which I believe is the biggest fight available in the women's division possible. It's a legacy career statement fight for her. Larissa Pinchenko, who beat her fair and square. So Kayla's, call it next two to three fights at PFL, are harder than they are at UFC, are bigger than they are at UFC. So I don't know. Uh, I really can't explain her motivations for leaving. And and I was disappointed. So I don't mind admitting that, that I wish she was here. Um, That being said, because PFL has never been stronger, 80 fighters ranked in the top 25, 33 fighters ranked in the top 15, we're fine. You know, it's almost like when people post about UFC, they're always fine if Connor's not fighting this year or something like that. So our brand, our ratings, our financials, zero impact to Kayla not being here. But personally, I don't like when any fighter leaves. So I wish she was here. And and so could could I ask like you said there was one fight left how how did that end up with her leaving? Still, I mean, we believe she had one fight left. She did not believe it. Um, we chose not to be legalistic about it. Okay. Um, you know, remember when Dane and Francis went through all that stuff for like yeah. two years? Yeah. Eh, that's just not who we are. Why be like that? So we just said. Look, if that's truly your wish and you feel that strongly about it, go ahead. Okay, fair enough. Uh, by the way, speaking of Mr. Conor McGregor, he has two fights left. He's been quite vocal about this. Uh, not sure how much you could say, but is this is this a situation where you're like, okay, if he gets that fight in June and there's one fight left, you know, do, do, we, do we try to get all 
parties involved, all investors. Like this is this is the game changer right here. Do you try? Do you have to wait? What what when you hear that sort of thing? And I know that you've heard it because it's been out there, and you have your finger on the pulse. What are you thinking? Well, not addressing Connor per se, but just addressing any fighter, whether it's um, you know John Jones, whether it's Conor McGregor, or anybody. The market understands that we now have the capital to do anything, anything. Um, the market understands that our desire to think differently um, is unlimited. And the market understands that our partners want to stage the biggest fights in the world beyond what's ever been done. So we don't need um, anything that we don't have to make the biggest fights happen with the biggest fighters on the biggest stage. So anybody who's interested, whenever they're available, we're ready. And we're the most creative and we're the most aggressive and then we're, we're the most interested. So that applies across the board. Uh, the PFL season starts in April. Um, the second event of the season is the night before UFC 300 in Las Vegas. What was the, uh, the thinking behind doing that? No, to be blunt, no thinking. <laughs> it worked perfectly. No thinking, right? Sometimes I think it's brilliant. Um, by the way, you it's yeah, like I know. WrestleMania. You have I know. a multitude of events that week in Philly, and I know. Like, so why not? I know. Some I know. I, I wish I wish I could take classic brilliant. Wow. Thinking because you know deep in Reddit they go, oh, this is this, this is that. <laughs> you know, it's the JFK theory it meets MMA part two. Um, it that weekend was perfect, and it was always planned for our PFL season calendar. Wow. So that Friday had been locked with ESPN. So it's just a question of where is that held? And they were literally down to two cities that work for us. In the PFL season this year, we wanted to have 10 events in 10 different cities. As fans of the PFL know in the past, we've done many residencies, three events, three cities with a championship in a different place. This year we said, we're taking it to 10 different cities big enough fan base now to let them do it. And so we're down to two cities where we could take Vegas. Is it this event or that event? And we just made that choice. Okay. The championship, will it be back in DC in New York? Have you decided yet? Um, it will not. The championship for the first time ever will be outside the country. Oh, wow. Um, it is a world championship. It is now a global event. And so the PFL championship for the first time ever in season six will leave the United States. And it will not be in the United States. All other events are inside the United States. Will it be in Saudi Arabia? We haven't announced it yet, but it will be outside the U.S. Well, I know and, you haven't announced it. That's why I was asking you to announce it here. I know. <laughs> yeah. you get, and you're, you're up like five pieces of new information already today. It's like 22 minutes in, it's, five pieces. Yeah. Um, but it'll be outside the U.S. What we found pretty interesting, and look, UFC's done this for a while. And most people who know UFC very well, they don't go anywhere without getting paid to go somewhere. There are now more territories, more cities, more countries that want MMA that can get it. So PFL is now in demand, not to the degree UFC is. I don't want to overstate the case, but PFL is now in demand outside of the United States. Um, so we'll be taking a select number of events each year outside the United States with host countries and with host partners. Um, the Mideast is certainly one that people talk about but there are three other regions that are pretty active around the world to bring MMA there. And we'll start doing that at the end of this year and more in 2025. Um, rounding third here, back on Bellator, first show of the new era this Friday on Max here in the United States, DAZN and other outlets in Europe, Canada, Fight Network. Um, just wondering, as far as the events are concerned, I know you've announced the location for the seven, first seven. There's the eighth one on December 31st. So back to New Year's Eve for you guys. No location attached to that one. Do you know where that's going to happen? We do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, and I'm, I'm only going to give you two clues because I'm going to let Pete Murray announce it. Okay. He will come on your show and he will give it to you. Um, it is in a location that is very cool outside the U.S. and has never hosted MMA. And wow. it's where everybody would want to spend New Year's Eve. And so it is never hosted MMA. It is a fantastic location, and it's new to MMA. So um, as I said, PFL and is now at a different level of uh, appetite and interest on a global scale. And I don't want to steal Pete's great work, um, but it's going to be very, very exciting, I think, for fans wow. at that last show. 
yeah. was thinking Japan, maybe this, but they've hosted MMA, so never hosted, hosted an event of any kind. Correct. Wow. Okay. That is quite the tease. Uh, a lot of people ask me about the broadcast team for the Bellator events. Could you tell us who that bit will be? Um, so your old friend, Chael, will be joining the broadcast team. Wow. Love it. Um, Big John McCarthy, we're doing something very interesting. Um, for those who watch a ton of football, as I do, there is an in-studio rules uh, analyst. Yeah. So he'll be playing this role this year for PFL as well as Bellator. Like so it, he yeah. will be commenting on technical aspects from a studio, much like uh, Pereira does. You know, for, yeah, for I like Fox it. Sports. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So, um, so things like what happened with the uh, splitter. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> we will go to Big John McCarthy. He will know everything about the rules as well as everything about what is right or wrong happening around the judging. So I think it'll be very interesting. Um, and we're also adding a new woman to the broadcast team, which I don't want to steal a thumb on until she is announced and signed. Okay. But it'll be fantastic. So I think you will see a broadcast team that combines the best of PFL, the best of Bellator, and the best of new talent to MMA. It could be very fresh, but um, consistent with what we've done before. Just to add to that, you'll see an entire new graphics package for Bellator, which is something I love. I heard you talking about posters before you came on. Yeah. I'm an artistic guy. I spent a lot of time on our graphics. And to uh, George Greenberg's uh, delight, as you can imagine, him being 70 years old and wanting to spend time with me on graphics, yeah. including colors and pixels. Um, so you will see a show that's brighter, more colorful, more fast-paced, more gamified. So if you're a fan of a next-gen product you will love the new bellator product it's very fresh and in terms of the events themselves and i saw you talk about this a little bit in the lead up every event two title fights so six events this year are already planned out two we haven't figured out the title fights yet but all eight two title fights so they are curated every event has meaning this is not like bellator 303 bellator 304 numbers gone this is bellator 2024 champion series eight curated events two title fights every single event uh play by play is that sean o'connell sean is doing a play by play okay. too he should win the emmy he's, he's passed over still because you know obviously he's still making his name but considering he's a fighter he ain't a color guy he's a play by play no, it's it's what if tony romo was play by play I mean, that's so hard to do. So he is still the play-by-play -play for the voice of Bellator also. And last one, uh, in terms of what it, the fighters are wearing, is it the, the same type of deal as PFL, like a uniform, but one sponsor, two sponsor, that type of thing? Uh, a similar thing, but they have a little bit more freedom, which you'll see. And to your question, what you're going to ask on elbows, of course, elbows are allowed because these are one-off events. So uh, full elbows, you know, let the games begin. Love it. Uh, March 22nd, that's this Friday on Max. Very cool. Uh, as as a, a young kid who started his uh, TV career as an intern at HBO Sports, I know it's not quite HBO, but to me it's it's the same damn thing, and it's cool to see them back. It's the in same. The, yeah. Uh, Ariel, I grew up watching all that boxing. Yeah. Right? So to me, the only way I ever saw combat was HBO. Uh, you know, I grew up, my dad was a salesman. We, we couldn't afford a pay-per-view. There was no, I wasn't buying any of that. When we got HBO when I was like 10 years old, man, that's, that was it. That was the only way I could see. I would never see one live. So to me, it's exactly what you said. This is back to the future of the roots of combat. It's just you have 90 million homes now available to see Bellator. So I love it. Great stuff. Congratulations, Don. Always appreciate the time and the insight. Uh, good luck to you and the team on Friday, and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Appreciate it. There he is, Don Davis, uh, the founder of PFL. A lot of big news in their world. He's dropped. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.